Welcome to Inside the Studio with Greg Wirth. And this episode is a special episode that was requested by many viewers of mine. And it's just uh, a, lot of, a lot of tips and tricks for Pro Tools that I, I always assume that all the viewers are advanced and kind of understand things. But there's certain fundamental features and, and little uh, shortcuts that not everybody knows. So I figured that I'd shoot this quick video and show some examples of that. So a lot of people had mentioned, you know, when, when you go to insert a plugin, uh, Pro Tools defaults like this under categories. So if you want a, you know, dynamic compressor, you got a fat list like this. And people had seen on my videos that I have them categorized like this and by manufacturer. So the way to do that is you need to go up to Pro Tools preferences and under the display tab here, there's this section called organized plugin menus and by category. And what you can do is you can select category and manufacturer, which is what I recommend, or you can do flat list, just manufacturer, however you want. But this helps me personally get to plugins quickly because I, I tend to have a lot of plugins by very specific manufacturers. So it's helpful to sort of organize them in that way. So when you select that, this is how it looks, which is very cool. So you can kind of get quickly get to stuff or if you want to browse and just find something that you might not remember that you had, I always go to this category list. That's always good for that. Okay. And secondly, there's another feature that you can kind of have under this menu when you're inserting a plugin. And the way to get that is go to the mix tab under Pro Tools preferences and you can select a default uh, compressor and EQ. So if you have a favorite set of plugins that you always want to go to, you can make a basically get to them quickly when you insert them. So you can you go here and you know default EQ. I'm always using the Fab Filter Pro Q2, so that's a good one. And default compressor, uh, I, I really like the Vertigo VSC2, but again, you can pick whatever you want there. And um, of course, you're, you're limited to dynamic or EQ, so it, it doesn't let you mix and match. But the Slate Digital Virtual Mix Rack obviously has a mix and match of all kinds of different compressor EQ, saturation, and whatnot. So you can actually use that. And you can, you know, get pretty creative with that. So here, I'll show you how this looks like in the menu here. So see, now you got that. Okay. And so another trick that um, a lot of people didn't really know, or what I think might be helpful is, so say, you know, I got these eight audio tracks and I want to insert the same compressor and same EQ on all of them. And I want to quickly do it rather than, you know, adding them one by one. So what you do is you select the the top one and you hold shift and you click down to eight. So it highlights all of them. And then what you do now is hold shift option and you go and insert uh, the compressor, say. And so it drops that compressor down to every track quickly. And let's do the same thing with an EQ. So that's very cool. And also to set up sends for headphone mixes or you know, effect sends for reverbs and different plugin effects, you can do the same type of thing. So hold shift option and go to the send and pick a bus, let's say drum, drum verb. Okay. So it inserted them all. And so what's cool is you can go and you can shift option, still hold that and uh, click the fader. So you bring them all to zero and you can go down the line and sure enough, it's added that on all of them. And you know, the, the shift option is global for a lot of stuff. So like if you wanted to, to change these outputs to say a drum bus, they all go to the same, but say you want to copy them, uh, say you wanted them to go to the stereo bus and the drum bus. So you can add control into that mix of, uh, quick keys and out one and two. And so it adds this little plus sign. And if you go here, it's sending your track out of the, 
drum bus and the the output for monitoring so really cool valuable tools i mean again i i assume that most of, most of my viewers know this stuff but um, i've had a couple inquiries and i figured that it would be cool to shoot a video like this and give you guys an example because these are helpful tips and tricks that can kind of improve your workflow and just you know get to having fun mixing recording doing the fun stuff rather than the tedious things setting up here okay so thanks for watching inside the studio with greg worth and please feel free to shoot me emails i'll do more videos like this i'm happy to help check you out next time